We're still facing a very dark winter. The projections still indicate we could lose 200,000 more lives in the coming months before a vaccine can be made widely available. So we can't forego the important work that needs to be done between now and then to get our country through the worst wave yet in this pandemic. President-elect Biden there on Monday warning of the dark winter ahead as the U.S. sets records nearly every day for new coronavirus cases. This past week alone, nearly one million people in this country were diagnosed with the virus. And just yesterday, the nation surpassed 245,000 COVID-19 deaths. But as I spoke with Americans in the aftermath of the election, I found many who continue to downplay the pandemic. Absolutely. Do you not wear a mask because Donald Trump? No, has absolutely it made not. It? No, because I, that's that's that's. I just don't believe in them. Same thing with me. I mean, uh, can the masks really defend a microbe coming through the the, the weaving of the fiber? No, I kind of no, doubt it. No. I really doubt it. Do you guys just not believe the scientists on this? No, no. I believe COVID. COVID is real, I, and COVID is absolutely real. I just like I said, I just lost my cousin. You know, I never thought that the disease was worth all the precautions and everything that w went down as far as shutting down the country. Even though you're worried about this virus, how do you feed your family? I'm more worried about that than I am about catching something that has like, was a 97.95% survival rate. Wash your hands, eat well, you know, take your probiotics and your vitamins, you know, just do what we do during cold and flu season and just pray for the best. With those comments in mind, we turn now to two experts on the pandemic, Admiral Brett Girard, a member of the White House Coronavirus Task Force, and Dr. Atul Gawande, who was named this week to President-elect Biden's COVID-19 advisory board. And I want to begin with you, Admiral Girard. The news on a vaccine is, is so encouraging, but right now, as we said, we're hitting those grim numbers, some health experts calling the pandemic in the United States a humanitarian disaster. The president has been downplaying the seriousness of it, and you heard those Trump supporters. So you can have those constant reminders. You can tell them to wear a mask, but things are getting worse. So what in the world do you do? So thank you for having me on, Martha. And as you did point out, we had some remarkably positive news about a potential vaccine that's over 90 percent effective. And that is a game changer. We'll bring an end game to the pandemic. However, we really are in a critical situation today uh, with over 180,000 cases yesterday, hospitalizations up, mortality up. But I want to tell the American people that we know what to do. We've done it many times before in the Sun Belt, in the South. The United Kingdom is doing that. And that is you must physically distance. When you cannot physically distance, everybody needs to wear a mask in public spaces. That's absolutely critically important. They do work. We're going to have to do things like limit attendance or close bars, uh, close indoor restaurants, because that's very important. If we do these things combined with the testing that we have, we can flatten the curve. If we do not do these things, the cases will continue to go up. The United Kingdom just did these things. They kept the schools open. They kept major businesses open. We can do that, but we have to do the other things. If we do that, we'll flatten the curve, slow the spread, and get us to that time when we have a vaccine. And it's not very far off. We could have 20 million doses by the end of November, another 20 million by the end of December. But, Admiral, I just want to say again, and I've been across the country, and it, it is remarkable how in certain places, and I will say red states, they are not wearing masks. What do you do about that? How does that affect the curve everybody else might want to flatten? We all have to communicate very clearly that the, the science is clear, the evidence is overwhelming. Whether you want to look at microbiological data or you want to look at epidemiology, city by city, state by state, country by country, that masks do work. They're highly protective against you spreading it to someone else, and we also know that it provides you protection from getting it from someone else. It's not just the little microbe, it's the droplets which the microbes uh, hitch a ride on. So across the board, whether these are local mandates, whether these are voluntary, whether these are public service messages, we have to have the American people wear masks when you can't physically distance. We're going to have to limit that indoor spread um, by limiting bars and restaurants, which are places where you're indoors, you're not masked, um, and we know that there can be significant uh, transmission. We don't have to close schools. We don't have to close major industries. But we are going to have to be careful around the holiday time 
because even a large gathering within your household can be a, 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 a way that it can spread. And if you just Google CDC holiday gatherings, there's some very easy tips to keep your family safe during the holidays. A A Ad Admiral, we know who is not shouting that message to the American public, and that is Donald Trump. The Washington Post is reporting this morning that the president has not attended a coronavirus task force meeting in at least five months. Is that accurate? Um, that, that's true, but the vice president um, does chair the coronavirus uh, task force. Uh, the vice president, we often have several cabinet members there, and the vice president briefs the, the president every day or, or nearly every day on coronavirus. So I, I'm not concerned that the president doesn't attend. The vice president is there, Secretary Azar, the leadership that's there, uh, the scientific community, Dr. Burks, Dr. Fauci, myself, Dr. Hahn, Dr. Redfield. You know, we're all working, and, and the docs work uh, literally every single day together. Um, we put out over 50 million of the card-based tests, another 8.5 million this week. Ad Admiral, uh, I want to... Monoclonal I, antibody. Sorry to interrupt you on that. We're just short on time here. The no, head of Operation right. Warp Speed, Monsef Slawi, who stood by the president on Friday, is calling on the White House to allow his team to make contact with the Biden COVID transmission team, which is being held up by the president who's not accepting the election results. Do you agree they should be given access and talk to the Biden COVID team? So, um, you know, I'm not Dr. Slawi. I can say from, from my point of view that uh, the, the GSA con controls the transition process. Uh, my team, all the docs that work for us, we want to be extremely transparent. Uh, we are extremely transparent with the media, with outside experts, with public health experts. Some of but which would are it be, is on, it important uh, to be able to Biden talk to advisors. the Biden team at this point? Just a yes or no. Uh, look, I, I want to be as transparent as possible with everybody. This is not a political issue. This is an issue of public health and saving American lives. And I think there's nothing more important than that. Okay, thank you very much, Admiral. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.